this is good news out of Detroit for once. Yeah, actually, you know, the story really has been one of uh, consistent growth over the past year, uh, almost every month, except for some months where there was some noise because of the uh, supply disruption caused by the Japanese earthquake. You've seen continuing increases in sales and the auto industry, not only is the sales increased, uh, you've seen significant investment announcements and job hiring announcements by virtually every automaker um, in, in North America, which shows that they're they are bullish on the economy growing this year, next year, the year after, and the sales getting stronger and stronger. Dennis, what do you think? Uh, Mike, it seems like uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, new investment here in the United States uh, from foreign manufacturers, from, from the U.S. manufacturers. We've been talk we were talking earlier about the AMR bankruptcy, but it seems that uh, from the U.S. perspective, the GM bankruptcy and the Chrysler bankruptcy actually were the right and uh, positive thing for the companies and the industry at large. Well, there's no question if you want to talk about what what companies are, are have been the most successful over the past year, Chrysler, which was vir virtually written off, and, and you know, Steve Ratner said that, <laughs> that there were a lot of people in the Obama administration who wanted to just, uh, you know, sign the death warrant for Chrysler. Uh, Chrysler's been a tremendous success. They reported 44% increase in sales in January and reported a $183 million pro modest but decent profit for the year end for Chrysler uh, for a company that most people just had basically said, you know, wasn't worth saying or saving at the time. That's been a big success. By the way, Chrysler is totally out of U.S. ownership. They don't have any government ownership anymore. Um, GM, you know, they they uh, their sales were down a bit, but uh, you know those numbers aren't quite uh, aren't quite as uh, as clear as they should be. They they had a huge increase last year because they uh, had piled on incentives, and this year they backed off. Uh, so they they were down, but virtually the rest of the industry is is up a bunch. You're seeing um, really large commitments to new capacity in the United States and in Mexico that have been made over the past uh, weeks and months. And, you know, the auto industry is humming and it's actually, you know, we were talking about the jobs report. I would be very curious to see what percentage of that jobs, uh, those jobs and hiring are coming in the manufacturing, in particular the auto sector, because there are signs that there are actually labor shortages in some areas, uh, which is uh, kind of amazing to see considering what it was like a few years ago when they were shedding hundreds of thousands of jobs. So to Mike, there's a few things that I can see that are, that are going on here with, with cars. It's one is that people did stretch the life of the car that they had for a while during the fin and after the financial crisis. Maybe they would have kept one for three years and that now they made it at five and, and that's sort of coming to an end. So maybe you get a, a boom with that. The other thing when you buy a car is a, a lot of people um, need to borrow money, maybe lending stuff standards are now more normalized to, 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 to buy a car. Do you think those two, two factors uh, represent a, a, a big part of this? Or is this just people feeling very confident and taking a sack of cash down to the dealer and buying the car? There's a confluence of things. I would say consumer confidence obviously has a role. But um, it, frankly, the, the, uh, this dip in demand, which has now been years in the making, is coming um, into play. People, as you said, are holding on to cars the longer than they ever have in history. The cars are better, so that allows them to do that. But through almost all of the 2000s, the, you know, the industry was selling 16 to 17 million cars a year, new cars a year. And for the past several years, it's been you know, 10 million, 11 million, 12 million. You know, we're, we're talking about a very significant uh, reduction with the average uh, number of cars sold is. That adds up over time and you start to get to a point where the fleet is very old and the demand for new vehicles will just rise no matter what consumer confidence is. Right. Add that to the fact that consumer credit is much more available and yes, the, the car sales will likely continue to rise at a steady pace for, for month after month. Now let's keep two things in mind here, Simon. First thing, of course, is that the Japanese yen is trading at, at such a high level that it's become eco uneconomical uh, one to export as many cars mm. as they were before. So that's helping the U.S. auto industry here. So that might be somewhat of an artificial crutch. And let's not forget. Well, they can uh, make them here, too. And, and so that's good for the U.S. auto yeah. industry. But let's not forget, Simon, as well, as we're talking about the AMR bankruptcy, that there are a lot of people who lost a lot of their pension, health care, and so on in those GM and Chrysler bankruptcies, too. So. Mm. To have a gain today did mean uh, a sacrifice uh, in the years past. Okay, and we have to leave it there. Thank you very much. Uh, Mike Ramsey of the Wall Street Journal out in Detroit.